In this video, we're going to look at an example of ratio and proportion. Specifically, in this example, we're given the proportion that a colon 7 colon 3 is equal to 1 colon 2 colon b, and we're asked to solve for the variables a and b. So before we take this up together, go ahead and try this out on your own. So before you do that, let's just discuss the information that we've been provided here. We're being told that A compares to 7 the same way that 1 compares to 2. So that's one piece of information that we can use to set up a new proportion to help us solve for A. If we go ahead and remove that emphasis for a moment, we're also being told that 7 compares to 3 the same way that 2 compares to B. So that's something else that we can use to set up a new smaller proportion that will help us solve for B. There are other ways that we can do this question. We're also being told, for instance, that A compares to 1 the same way that 7 compares to 2, and so on. So we can use any of these to help us set up an appropriate proportion that will then allow us to solve for the variable A, and another one that will allow us to solve for the variable B. Now, before we do start, you'll notice that we could, alternatively, try to say that A compares to 3 the way that 1 compares to B. But the problem with this is that we're going to have a proportion that relates both variables to one another at the same time, and that'll be tricky for us to solve because we're going to have two unknowns. So we want to avoid this scenario. So again, the key is go ahead and solve for one variable at a time by using key pieces of information given in the proportion. So go ahead, try this out, hit the pause button, and then hit play when you're ready to continue. So hopefully you've had a chance to try this out. Again, there are different ways for us to actually solve for A and B, but let's go ahead and say that we're going to set up the proportion that A compares to 7 in the same way that 1 compares to 2. So our first proportion then that we're going to set up is that A compares to 7 the same way that 1 compares to 2. What this means is that A over 7 is the same as 1 over 2. Now, to solve this for a, we can cross multiply to get that 2a equals 7, and then we can divide both sides by 2, or even easier is just to multiply both sides by 7, and then we can isolate for a right away to obtain that a is 7 over 2. Next, we're going to want to solve for b. So let's look back at the original proportion in the question and we'll notice that we can compare the fact that 7 compares to 3 in the same way that 2 compares to B. Now again, you might be tempted to say, why don't we just compare A compares to 3 the same way that 1 compares to B, because at this point we do already know A. That is definitely correct, but we usually say it's better to use data that's given in the question rather than something that was calculated as part of your solution. Because if there's a mistake in the solution, you don't want that to propagate through to all the other parts of the question. So if possible, we'd like to avoid using the fact that A is 7 over 2 as part of our calculations for B. So we're going to use data that already does exist in the question, and that is the fact that 7 compares to 3 in the same way that 2 compares to B. In other words, 7 over 3 is the same as 2 over B. Now, B here is in the denominator, so let's just go ahead and cross multiply to help us solve. We're going to get 7B equals 2 times 3, which is 6, and so solving, we find that B is 6 over 7. Again, the key points to keep in mind are that we're using key data from the proportion that's given initially to help us solve for one variable at a time, and then we obtain our answer that A is 7 over 2 and B is 6 over 7. 